Hi, I'm Susan Tomasich. I'm here today with Jim and Sandy Genestris. They're part of the Billy Graham Ministries. They're chaplains and part of the Rapid Response Team. So welcome to San Andreas in Calaveras County. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it's good that. to be here. I grew up in the Midwest, so Billy Graham was on the TV all the time. When I saw the truck, it drew my interest right away because I was like, wow, Billy Graham's in town, and I had no idea that there was a rapid response team, so it made me really curious. Would you tell us a little about what you do, why you're here, and what you hope to accomplish before you leave? Okay, great. We, um, Sandy and I are husband and wife, and uh, I'm a retired firefighter, and uh, the Billy Graham ministry, this rapid response team actually started after 9-11. Uh, chaplaincy to support the local church and to help be a blessing to the community and uh, we got invited to come along after Hurricane Katrina and we've been doing this since uh, all across the nation and different parts of the world. The organization uh, is actually the same organization as Samaritan's Purse which is in town here in San Andreas and the surrounding area helping people sift for valuables and we come along as chaplains to, not only to support the Samaritan's Purse team but also to support people in the community so many here have lost so much and they need that comfort uh, whether or not they're people of faith they need that same comfort to know someone cares that'll listen to their story that'll try to help step them through even the process of the the services that are available and so that's what we're here for great um, now we talked to Samaritan's Purse the other day we found out there's five different teams are there complementary teams and each of you have a complementary team with each of the Samaritan Purse teams, is that correct? It's fluid, but yes we do. This, this week Sandy and I are here as coordinators of eight other chaplains that are here from all parts of the country that have decided to volunteer and come here. And so what we do is we'll split them up. Uh, Sandy and I will just come to an agreement of, of this, this seems an appropriate match for this team and we'll send two chaplains out with them so that way they can engage the homeowners while Samaritan's Purse is doing the work. And I should point out, I think it would be unfair to not say that the Samaritan's Purse workers are also volunteers, also believers, and are equally as qualified as we are. But their job description right now is to help sift ashes. And our job description is to come alongside, provide that spiritual and emotional care to the people, mm -hmm. and uh, to just be real folks with them. Uh, not to be experts from out of town, but to just be like them as best we can and to try to make them feel comfortable so they can, they can share uh, some of the hurt and pain they've been through. And we can, I hope, make a difference, give them that opportunity to begin to heal. Okay, so can you explain to me, I, I'm curious about the difference between, say, a minister in a local church and a chaplain and is there a difference or is there not? What qualifies you to be a chaplain? Do you want to answer that one, sweetheart? Or? Well, um, I think that as a pastor um, and as chaplains, we all have the same goal. We all, of course, love Christ and we want to be able to help people. We want to be available in their time of need. Um, for a pastor, um, he has usually has a calling of ministering to a local body of Christ. Um, for us, we have the opportunity um, to receive crisis training. We're all crisis trained chaplains, and we are able to gain entrance into disaster sites that pastors oftentimes cannot gain access into. So, in other words, they'll allow chaplains in and not pastors. So we're able to get to the homeowners pretty fast. Great. That is good to know. Now, my next question is going to be, if I am a chaplain and I want to volunteer, what, how do I do it and how do you vet the chaplains that want to volunteer? Um, the best way to describe that right now to, to volunteer for Samaritan's Purse doesn't take any particular certification or skill level. You're just a believer or even an unbeliever, a, a good citizen that just wants to help. For chaplains, uh, we have to go through some specific training, background checks, um, and some of the training is specific to the Billy Graham Association, 
but other of it, the, the what we call the Critical Incident Stress Management series of courses is actually a national, even an international standard for chaplaincy. So all of us that serve have already been through those courses, been through um, on-the-job training as well in other incidents before we show up at a true emergency uh, so that we have that, that ability to offer spiritual and emotional care to anyone of a faith background, no matter what it is, or no faith. The, the opportunity is there to just be that caring person. We know that the power of the Holy Spirit is what's behind our words, and we will use the truth of Scripture, but we're not there to, um, we're not there to, uh, not even actually looking for them to come to faith. Our first priority is to treat them as a person made in the image of Christ, a person that's valuable and loved. And when they know that, they can ask us, what's the reason for the hope that's in you? And for your audience, of course, they would know the answer to that, right? It's to share the hope that's in us with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of sets us apart. And actually, it's part of what allows us legally to have access to emergencies is that we're bound by not coming in and in any way pushing faith. What we're here to push is the love that God has for people that he made. Great. I'm part of the local CERT team, which is Community Emergency Response Team. We do have at least one chaplain that I know of, and I believe someone else is going through chaplain training. So if the chaplain wanted to come and volunteer, she most likely would... I'm, I think she'd probably have the same training that she already have, but of course you would have to vet that. Yes. Um, so great, I will definitely let, let her know because I'm assuming that you could use more volunteers. Yes, oh yeah, chaplains, uh, there are currently about 1,500 chaplains around the country right now that are certified and they're available. And in fact, when this emergency happened in California, the first group that the Billy Graham Association contacted was the California chaplains to see which ones could respond. And uh, depending on where the emergency is, it could be anywhere in this country, or in some cases, even foreign countries. So yes, there's, we're always looking for volunteers. There's a course that they can take even online uh, called Sharing Hope in Crisis. Go to billygram.org. Go to training and look up that online course and you can take that course and even turn in an application online and that will be vetted by the people in North Carolina at headquarters and then you'll be contacted and given instructions on what courses you need to take and that will all be followed up with a background check and, uh, and to put you in a position where uh, someday, Lord willing, when you get that call, you can say, yes, you know, I've got a shirt, I've got a badge. And I've, and I've got the love of Christ in my heart, and I want to go into that community and make a difference. Speaking of North Carolina, I'm curious, how long did it take between the time this fire started, the organization found out about it, and you showed up here? What was that travel like? Well, for Sandy and I, the answer is a little different. We live in San Diego, actually a little town called Encinitas. So we were called and came in. Samaritan's Purse actually watches emergencies worldwide constantly. As soon as they knew something was happening here that had potential, they contacted local churches, often through the Operation Christmas Child relationship that's already been built up, and to see, let us know what's happening, what you see. We're hearing the news, we're getting the reports from the fire and looking at the websites, and can we come? Do you have availability? Would you like us to come? And like the Billy Graham Association has always done with crusades and things like that, an invitation is what's needed. We don't just barge into any incident. And so what happened though is as soon as it was, there was an invitation, the truck started rolling from North Carolina. It takes four full days to get here. Um, and uh, they can only drive 11 hours a day to even be reasonably safe. And so they started out with what they call a disaster response vehicle, a shower trailer, a cook trailer, uh, another one that just has supplies and materials, and a long caravan. And so four days is what it took to get here. And in, in one case, they actually put two drivers in the, the big lead vehicle so that they could drive continuously across the country to get here as soon as possible. Uh, we have found that the, uh, that, that effort to be in as quickly as possible is the first sign of hope for many communities. They begin to see that the church hasn't withdrawn, uh, that there's, there's people sending resources. 
And uh, so that invitation, that relationship gets built early, and then we immediately contact the local authorities, see where they want us to fit in, try to be a part of the emergency operations, and make sure we're not interfering and that we're actually supporting and encouraging local emergency responders. And uh, those, all those things put together uh, form, we're trying to be part of the community, even though we're from outside it. And uh, even though you haven't asked this, I, I think it's important to say that our job here too is to not take over. We're here to do what we can do and to try to help the local church to then absorb the new believers or absorb those in the community that might have an interest in growing or having a new community in the church. And we try to get the church prepared for that too so that when we do have to pull out, that we leave behind nobody as an orphan. They have a place to go, a church that wants to adopt them, uh, help them to grow in their faith. And, uh, and for the emergency responders and everyone else, we want them to know too that they have a place to call. They have a, they have a contact and we build relationships so that they would say, oh, Jim and Sandy, I'm gonna call them. I've got their phone number. And so even after we've left the scene, we're often in contact with people in, in the, um, we will be, with San Andreas and all other places. Um, and uh, we are also training in the churches. We're going along, uh, we were, well, I guess I won't mention individual churches, but five different um, churches in this uh, community have invited us to speak, to help encourage their people to come and volunteer. And out of that group of folks, um, many of them know other people in their parts of the community, uh, wherever they live at. And so they're telling them. And so uh, we send out every day, we send out a new group of people from this town to go out and help their neighbors and help facilitate that. And uh, that's, that's our job. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that actually was going to be my next question is what churches you've gone to and not necessarily the names, but how you've been outreaching. Um, one thing I'm curious about, are you getting quite a bit of traffic here in your mobile unit? Yes, actually the, the mobile ministry center, we call it, has gotten a lot of traffic. In fact, I've tried to conduct meetings here with our chaplains. It doesn't work. We get about two sentences out and somebody notices they're here shopping at treats and and they, they notice we're here and come over and we've prayed with people. We, we never give counsel, but we've helped people to get connected with local resources. And uh, it's just been a great time. They sit down, they share a cookie, uh, they get some materials and in some cases borrow a phone or whatever it takes to just help them go the next step. And it's just been a great encouragement to us uh, to see so many people in the community. And so there is lots of traffic and uh, we almost hate to shut it up every day because we know we're going to miss somebody. That's a good uh, point, though. When do you open and when do you shut up every day? Uh, variable. Uh, there is okay. No, there's no set time. Truthfully, uh, everything we do is fluid because the, like, before, just before we started this interview, I got a uh, text that reminded me that one of our work orders that's out on Mountain Ranch Road um, the homeowner had a medical emergency, and that is going to change my whole complexion. I'm going to be getting some chaplains heading to the hospital to help that family know that there's somebody there with them. And so things like that change. So we shut up, we go collect some people, make sure they get delivered to the right place, and that happens all day long. There's just this, this constant need that comes up. And so we try to keep this occupied with a representative, but when we can't, we, we let it speak for itself. We're helping in Jesus' name, and that's exactly, if this is closed, it's because we're helping in Jesus' name. Wonderful. Well, I think that's, it's amazing that you're here. I know that I appreciate all the help and comfort that you've been giving people. Mm -hmm. um, is there something we haven't covered that you think is important that we should cover before we end this interview? I, I think maybe the, I don't know if you want to speak to this too, sweetie, but I, uh, one thing I think is really important is to, we are trying to be an example of the body of Christ. Samaritan's Purse has a job description, the Billy Graham chaplains have a certain job description, but we work together in harmony so that um, the workers can't function without us and we can't function without them. And so we, we always are trying to set forth that example and uh, we are absolutely uh, not denominational or, uh, like I said, not even necessarily faith-based, uh, we are looking to support anyone in the community that needs help uh, because that, uh, our, 
I'm going to call him our international director. That's I won't even name him, but he's not. Uh, he has said before. This is his quote: that the the quality of our work is the platform for our ministry. We are there. We are here to earn the right to share the hope that's in us, uh, not to come in and assume that we're experts and we know better. Uh, we we submit to the authorities and we submit to the authority of the church in this area as well, and. Uh, we do that with love in our hearts and, and look, again, to make ourselves obsolete. We're trying to get ourselves out of work by doing as much as we can in a concentrated period of time. And then when we pull out, we leave behind, hopefully, a place of unity and a place where their people can really get that care, that ongoing care that they need. And, and I would like to say, too, that I know Sandy and I have prayed a lot. We have great... Um, a real great compassion in our heart. We've been out on a lot of these properties and to see people that have no hope is devastating. Uh, we try to come alongside them, but then to notice that if they find one teacup in the ashes, it's the only thing they have left and they cry and they hold that like it's the most precious thing. And they do that and almost without exception, they're thanking God that their family is okay, that they have one thing to remember what was, and now they're, they're going to move forward. And we are trusting that many will rebuild here. It's a tremendous community, great support we've seen here, and I pray that many will rebuild, kind of stay through all the things that are going to try to get in the way of that. Do your best to stay. This is a place you want to live. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for being here. We appreciate everything you're doing for us, and... I guess I hope we don't ever see you again, yeah, but <laughs> <you go>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. at least not under these circumstances. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Sandy. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much.